Good morning. Good morning. Let's all turn to page 185. Page 185, let's all stand. We'll sing the first, second, and last verses of My Savior's Love. I don't think that's My Savior's Love. I don't now, that's two services in a row. Fred's done that to us. Yeah, Fr Fred. So we're, Fred is almost about to get fired. <laughs> I'm going to shoot him. We're going to blame it on Fred. Yeah, shoot the piano player. <laughs> <laughs> awkward, he, might, he might be dead. Awkward silence. Awkward silence. Everybody just waiting. I don't know if I can play that or not. We can try we hope we hope the the sound man has yeah, did we break it. <laughs> hey, that sounds right. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sinner condemned unclean how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my savior's love for me for me it was in the garden he prayed not my will but thine he had no tears for his own grease but sweat drops of blood for mine how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my savior's love for me when with the ransomed in glory his face I at last shall see will be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my savior's love for me all right it is good to see everyone in service this morning we're glad that you're here even nobody else is glad to be here. Sing another song, brother. <laughs> Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Baskey, lead us in prayer, please, sir. Amen. All right, you can be seated. Uh, things look a little different around here today. Amen. I, I said this this week uh, uh, to someone. I, I said that usually for me, the week after vacation Bible school is, is a, a difficult week. Because uh, we go from all the excitement. I, you know, you're exhausted anyway. But you go from all the hype and all the excitement and all the things going on then you take it all down, and, and, and most of it goes in the trash can, and they haul all that off, and then you kind of sit around and go, wow. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of back to normal. But that's all right. We, normal is, is not bad. Uh, we, we just need to make that adjustment, and sometimes it's a bit of an emotional letdown. I thought we had a great vacation Bible school. I've heard several say this week, uh, that that was one of, if not, the best vacation Bible school that we've had. Probably, I was talking to my wife this week, which is a good thing that you do weekly. Um, <laughs> that you, <laughs> that, yeah, she agrees. Uh, that uh, probably, probably that was the vet best vacation Bible school that we've ever been involved in, period, uh, uh, over the, the, 
the years that we've been involved in ministry. But we had a great time. Uh, and we're really thinking about uh, and, and making plans already for next year and, and doing some things similar to what we did this year. But we had a great time. Had one saved, uh, gave, planted the seed of the gospel, many hearts and lives. Uh, so we, we enjoy that. Had a lot of fun. Uh, so we're, we're thankful for all of that. Uh, now, moving forward, we'll make some adjustments now. I uh, appreciate Brother Bill teaching Sunday school for us this morning uh, in my class. Uh, fifth Sunday, been trying to have a different one of the men fill in and, and, and teach the Sunday school class. Uh, and he did that this morning, did a good job uh, there. So we appreciate that. Uh, next Sunday, we'll have some other things going on. Uh, we will have a missionary with you. I can't tell you who it is uh, or where they're from. Uh, if I did, I'd have to shoot you. Uh, I'm kidding. Uh, we just don't want that out on the internet. Uh, with the field, they are one of our missionaries, but they are to a sensitive location. Uh, so they will be. I will say this: they have not been to our church since I've been here, uh, and I'm not sure the last time they were here. Uh, so if you want to know who that is after service, ask me. I'll tell you who it is, uh, but I'm not going to mention their name or their field uh, on uh, uh, online. So uh, do remember that next week looking forward to that and then next week uh, is our annual uh, our annual uh, watermelon back to school watermelon bus so we'll do that uh, next Sunday after the afternoon service so we're looking forward to looking forward to that Mr. Christie you have you have nursery night to, to this morning uh, I think somebody just came in if you want to make your way back there all right uh, so, so do remember all the activities, all the things that are going on. With that said, I, I do want to say this. Thank you so much uh, for all the effort, all the help, all the prayers, all the support, uh, and everything that, that went on and happened and took place for Vacation Bible School. That, what a tremendous week, tremendous time, uh, and we just so enjoy uh, uh, seeing uh, the church get involved in that. All right? Uh, do pray for Miss Emma. Uh, I, she, they put her in the hospital yesterday. I saw this morning that she was watching the, the Sunday school time this morning. I'm not sure if she's still watching. If she is, hi, Miss Emma. Hope you're having a, a better morning. Uh, but uh, she had some potassium uh, issues and some other uh, electrolyte issues and things. So they put her in the hospital trying to build her up there. Hopefully she'll get to come home today. I don't know. I uh, haven't heard this morning how she's doing. So you, you pray for her. Uh, I know she would appreciate that. Uh, others on our prayer list will not spend time uh, dealing with, with those, but you please do remember to pray for uh, all of those that are on our prayer list. Continue to uplift them. Services today, I'll give you this, then we'll get right back into our song service. Our service schedule today, we're going to revert back to our 6 o'clock service tonight. Uh, somebody asked, we got excited, asked me if that was permanent. I said, not yet. Uh, no, we're, we're going to revert back to 6 o'clock due to a scheduling difficulty that was, was already in place. Uh, so uh, we'll revert back to that tonight, 6 o'clock. So our evening service will be at 6 uh, tonight. So I just want to make sure uh, that you were aware of that, uh, that, that that's uh, what we're doing today. Uh, if you show up at 1.30, uh, the, the, it'll be a completely different service than you're expecting. I'm just, it's just going to be completely different. Uh, all right, uh, so do re remember that. All right, grab a hymn book. Let's go ahead and get back into our song service. Uh, let's rejoice uh, in what the Lord's doing today. Okay, you can remain seated and pay, turn to page 205. 205, we'll sing the first, second, and last verses of He Keeps Me Singing. In all of life's ebb and flow, Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. All my life was wrecked by sin and strife, this would fill my heart with pain. Swept across the broken strings, stirred the slumbering chords again. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sweet. 
beyond the starry sky I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown I shall reign with him on high Jesus 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 sweetest name I know fills my every longing keeps me singing as I go Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Ask Brother Crouch if he would the leaders in prayer, please. Amen. Let's turn to page 23. Page 23, and let's all stand. We'll sing the first, second, and last verses of There is Power in the Blood. <clears throat> Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood, come for a cleansing to Calvary's side. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily as praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. You may be seated. Appreciate Brother Bill teaching this morning. He, it's been kind of funny. We've been trying to get that accomplished for several months, and uh, the last time he had COVID when he was supposed to teach, uh, and then after he got back, he said, "Preacher, I had a I had a, a lesson all set up, and then you preached all over it. Now I got to get a new lesson." Well, Brother Bill, you te taught all over my message this morning. I don't have time to get a new message, so. <laughs> It's fun to see as God puts some things together. And he did. Uh, many of the things that he said this morning fall right in line with the message this morning uh, as well as, as the song, that, uh, How Great It Is. God of wood and stone 
I fell down on my knees to pray like so many times before. And I boldly asked my God to hear my prayer once more. Seeing that the heavens just opened up, and I could hear him say, Yes, my child, I can hear you. What do We serve an able God today, a God who is real, a God who is great. Take your Bible this morning, if you will, 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter number 5. This is a story uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 5 that you've heard me mention uh, quite often over the last few months uh, because I, I've told you, oh, I, I'm getting excited about preaching. I'm looking at back and they're standing looking at me going, preacher, you forgot something. Junior church, all right, children's church, if you would like to go this morning, you're welcome. They are waiting at the back door. Uh, make your way that direction if you're interested. Junior church is that direction. All right, let's go. There they go. All right, yes, sir. All right. First Samuel chapter 5, we'll get back. 1 Samuel chapter 5, you heard me you, you mention this story uh, often because the Lord gave me a, a, a thought a few months ago. I've been kind of working on that and trying to build into that and let the Lord marinate that and, and bring us to this place in His time. So I believe, I believe this is the moment that God has prepared for us. 1 Samuel chapter 5, you've seen the title already, Are We Serving a Broken God? You think, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I'm in a Baptist church, I get it. And you're thinking, preacher, that's a weird, sir, that's a weird title. I, I understand in our context, in our, in our service this morning, that may be a weird title. But I, I can guarantee you, to our society, that's a big question. That is a huge question today. And then the casual observer, I guess, if you will, as we look at our society, I, I guess the casual question would be, are we serving a broken God? Look at our society. Look at what's going on. How can the God of heaven uh, um, uh, allow things like what we see? How can America continue to go on? How can the world continue to function? How can we just, how can this old mud ball continue to spin uh, and God not step in and God not do something if He is true and He is real uh, and He is great? Well, I hope this morning that's some of the questions we try to answer today. I, I found an interesting poll. I don't like uh, to use, I don't put a whole lot of stock in uh, uh, these, these polls that they do, uh, but sometimes you, they're, they're interesting to see kind of some of the answers that are given. I found a very interest one, interesting one recently 
Uh, and I'm just going to give you the, the, the numbers because to me it speaks to this idea of America, specifically America's view or their idea about God. You know, things have shifted over the last few years. Few, I guess that's <laughs> um, an arbitrary number. But let me just give you some of these statistics. And these are a few years old. I, I have three or four, I think, uh, years old. But in, in a poll, there was uh, an interesting question. Uh, there was a question in this poll that said, Do you believe in God? 81% of the respondents to that poll in America said they believe in God. 81%. Now, that's a pretty vague question. Do you believe in God? Most people that I talk to, I think in our, in, in, in over the years in ministry, I think there have probably been, that I can remember right now, probably three or four people that I've talked to and asked them if they believed in God, that they honestly told me no. One was a Wiccan. Practice witchcraft. One was a hedonist, professed hedonist, and that, what, the, what is that preacher? Don't go look that up. You don't want to go. Don't do that. Don't Google that. Uh, but it just means they 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 are uh, practice gratification of the flesh. They're all about the flesh. Uh, and, and then the third was just an agnostic that just didn't believe. Atheist just didn't believe in God at all. So I've had three or four over the lifetime of the ministry that I've been involved in. I started. Uh, preaching in 1990, they'd have told me they didn't believe in... Everybody else believed in God. You, you believe in God? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But when you start trying to break that down a little bit, it gets a little more interesting. A little bit better question was asked. Uh, they asked, do you believe in God? Are you not sure about God? Uh, or, uh, that, or, or you just don't believe in God altogether? When given a choice, only 79% of America said they believed in God. The number's dropping a little bit. And then I thought this last one was, was telling a little bit more interesting. Here's a question that's a little bit more pointed. The question, and I'm not giving you the exact question, right? I'm just kind of picking out the, the points that were, were specific. But uh, it said this, they, they asked a group of people uh, and they gave them these choices. Are you convinced God exists? Do you think God consists, consists, but, uh, uh, exists, but you have doubt? Do you think that He probably exists, but you have a lot of doubt? Do you think that God probably does not exist? Or are you convinced that God does not exist at all? In that survey, only 64% of Americans said they were convinced that God exists. When we start wondering why, and again, that is just a, a very vague, very overall poll of just do you believe in God? That doesn't even count when you start getting into all of the details. Uh, I saw one poll that said uh, that uh, 60 some odd percent believe that there, that there is a God, uh, but over half of them when you really dig down a little bit and start asking them deeper questions, it wasn't that they believed in the God of the Bible, it's that they believed in some higher power somewhere. So it becomes very revealing when you start asking these questions uh, about where we are. Why is it that some are doubting that God even exists? Why, why is it there, there are some that have great calls in their own heart, their own mind, to disbelieve God. I, I believe it's for, for the reason that uh, they see this question. They, they, they think, they, they see us as Christians and us as Bible believers and us that believe in God and they look at us and they say, well, listen, if you believe that God is real, boy, you must be serving a broken God because what I see in the Bible is just not being translated into the lives of Christians. First Samuel chapter 5 is really going to be a starting point for us just to answer and talk about for a few minutes this morning this question, are we serving a broken God? This is the, the context from where this thought came from. 
And God built upon that. So if you'll stand, 1 Samuel chapter 5, we're going to read the entire chapter. It's only 12 verses, don't get excited. But you need the context of what's going on, 1 Samuel chapter 5, and we'll talk about the event, and I'll give you the message this morning. The Bible says this, 1 Samuel chapter 5, verse 1, And the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer unto Ashdod, when the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it, up, set it by Dagon. When the Ashdods arose early on the morrow, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. They took Dagon and set him in his place. And when they arose early on the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. And the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold only the stump of Dagon was left to him. Therefore neither the priest of Dagon nor any that come into Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod unto this day. The hand of the Lord was heavy upon them of Ashdod, and he destroyed them and smote them with emrods, even Ashdod and the coasts thereof. The men of Ashdod saw that it was so. They said, The ark of, God, of the God of Israel shall not abide with us, for his hand is sore upon us and upon Dagon our God. They sent therefore and gathered all the lords of the Philistines unto them and said, What shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? And they answered, Let the ark of God of Israel be carried about into Gath. And they carried the ark of God of Israel about thither. And it was so that after they carried it about, the hand of the Lord was against the city with a very great destruction. And he smote the men of the city, both small and great, and they had emrods in their secret parts. Therefore they set the ark of God to Ekron. And it came to pass as the ark of God came to Ekron that the Ekronites, the Ekronites cried out, saying, They have brought about the ark of God of Israel to us to slay us and our people. So they sent and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and say, said, Send away the ark of, God, of the God of Israel and let it go again to his own place, that it slay us not and our people. There was a deadly destruction throughout all the city. The hand of God was very heavy there. The men that died not were smitten with emrods and the, and the cry of the city went up to heaven. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful for the reading of your word today. Help us as we seek to broach this question about a broken God. I pray that you'll help us this morning to understand our role. Help us to make application of that illustration and that lesson that Brother Bill brought this morning about filling our place and doing our part. Hoeing our row. Father, lead God and direct us. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you can be seated. As you go back and you study this passage, you find that the Philistines and the Israelites are in, at war. And the Israelites go out to battle. They set their battle in array against the Philistines. And the Bible said, if you go back and read chapter 4, you'll find that the Philistines prevailed against the Israelites. And, and they were confused, and they were all concerned, and they were all worried, and some... Some genius in the group said, oh, I know what it is. We've left the ark of God back at, uh, at Jerusalem, uh, and we need the ark. If we can get the ark of God, and we can have the ark of God here in our presence, then we'll win. It's more, it's more than the artifacts of God that they needed. They didn't just need the box of God, they needed the God of the box. Well, sure enough, they call for the Ark of the Covenant, they bring it into the land. Matter of fact, if you'll read chapter 4, when the Ark of the Covenant gets there, all the Philistines get worried. Oh, God's in the camp. No, the box was in the camp. Big difference. You finish reading chapter number 4, you'll find out they go out to battle again. And this time again, the Israelites fall before the Philistines. And the Ark of the Covenant is taken. Matter of fact, not only the Ark of the Covenant is taken, but you read the story, you'll find out that Hophni and Phinehas, the two children of the, high, of, the, of the priest of God, they're killed. Word goes back to Eli. And when he hears the fact that the Ark is taken and his sons are dead, he falls off the stool there and he dies. Terrible days in the history of Israel. 
So that kind of leads us up to this event that we read. So the Philistines in victory. <laughs> A whole lot of preaching here. I'm just trying to get you up where, where I want to be. They take the ark of God. They've won the victory, right? They take the ark of God. We're going to demonstrate how our God has prevailed. No, why did the Israelites lose? It wasn't because of the Philistines. It was because of the fact that God was allowing judgment to fall upon the children of Israel. Dagon did not win the victory for the Philistines by default. <laughs> by, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for? By uh, Oh, Brother Tony, help me out. Uh, the other team didn't show up. What does that mean? Forfeit. By forfeit, the Philistines won. They bring the ark of God back to Dagon. They bring it in. They set the ark of God before their God. And they say, now the God of Israel will bow before our victorious God. Go out the next, the, the, that night. They come in the next day. We read, the, we read the story. The Bible says that Dagon's on his face before the Ark of the Covenant. That ought, to, that ought to raise a couple of red flags. I've said this before. I had to stop myself. I want to say it so bad while I was reading. I, I, could, I had to move on. Uh, you know, it, they had to, the Bible said they set their God back up in... Listen, if you've got to set your God back up in its place, you might want to get you a new God. They set Dagon back up in his place and they leave again. They come back the next day. The Bible said that again, Dagon's on his face before the ark of God. His hands are broken off. His head is broken off. The only thing left is a stump. Listen, they're serving a broken God that couldn't do anything in their life. I wonder today, if by our spirit and by our attitude, that we're not acting like we're serving a broken God. The lesson this morning Brother Bill brought was about Peter being in jail in the church making prayer for him. And the angel of God coming and delivering Peter out of jail. And there's, again, so many things in that story that it's worth, it's worth preaching. But that's not the message this morning. Well, one of the things, Brother Bill, I wrote down in my notes, that they got to that gate, that iron gate. Brought him out of the ward, chains fell off, brought him out of the prison, Several gates, you can study that out, how many gate, locked gates they had to go through. I think it was three that they had to go through to get out. They got to the last one. The Bible called it an iron gate, and it said it opened of itself. I had to stop and read that again. <laughs> it opened. Come on now. That's not normal. Oh, I mean, we've got doors. Now you walk up to the grocery store, and if that door don't open by itself, some of us are going to run into it because we're used to that. They were used to that. It just didn't happen that way. God showed up. God opened that door. God brought, and the church, when he got, what happened? Knocked on the door. Poor Miss Rhoda. She ran back in. Peter's out there. Oh, no, it's not Peter. Can't be Peter. He's in jail. They were astonished. No, no, wait, 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 before we get there, Brother Bill brought this out this morning. No, it's not Peter. Matter of fact, the Bible said they thought she was mad. She done lost it. Folks, we've got to get back to the place to where we believe God can do what He said He'll do. We've got to get back to a place where we understand and we'll give ourselves, I won't get way ahead of myself in the message, but that we will understand that God's still on the throne and God's still in control and God's still doing a work and we want to get involved. I'm not serving a broken God this morning. I'm not serving a God that cannot hear. I'm not serving a God that cannot answer. I'm not serving a God that's all somewhere uh, on a venture. I'm not serving that kind of God. Uh, let, let's talk about this just for a few minutes this morning. Uh, number one, we'll talk about this, the God who is unable. The God who is unable. Talking about a broken God this morning. Uh, Dagon was unable. 1 Samuel chapter 5, we'll find a couple of things. I already mentioned this. Number one, he was unable to stand on his own. He was unable to stand. Oh, Dagon, that boy, he was a God to be worshipped, right? He fell over on his face and he couldn't even get back up. 
He couldn't even stand up by himself. I don't want to serve a God that I've got to set up somewhere. I don't want a God that I've got to carve out of wood somewhere. I don't want a God, I don't want a God like that. I want a God that will stand on his own. I want a God that's, that, that's, that's self-evident and self, self-reliant. self I want a God who's able to do great things, not a broken God that's unable. I don't serve that God today. I don't serve a God that I have to lift up. I serve a God that's lifting me up. I serve a God that's standing on his own. I'm, I serve a God that's on high. High and lifted up, Isaiah said in chapter 6 of Isaiah. I serve the God that's still there, still worshipped, still holy, still righteous. That's the God that I serve. We see this Dagon, he was a God who was unable, he was unable to stand upon his own. Isaiah 46, boy look at this verse. Isaiah 46, Brother Bill, you got close this morning, I'm telling you. You got close, I got nervous. No, I didn't get nervous, I just got, rejo- I, I got to rejoicing. I'm glad when we get in line with what God wants. Isaiah 46, he says this, Isaiah 46 and verse number 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. We've got to get back to a place where we understand that we serve a God who's able. There's none like Him. There's nobody even close. He is Almighty God. Right, we talked about this Wednesday night, finishing up 1 Timothy. He is the only potentate. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is. It's time that we stop messing around and acting like He is one of many. We'll get to that in a minute. No, He is the holy, the righteous, the only true and living God. But the only way the world's going to believe that is if we believe it. And if we live it. Number two, I got I, several points this morning. I've got to move on. Number two, the God who was unable, he couldn't stand on his own. Number two, I read the whole chapter, 1 Samuel chapter 5, to get this thought. Not only was he unable to stand on his own, but he was unable to save his devoted. What happened the first city they were in? The hand of God. They had the ark of God. They'd won the victory. Their God's better than than the God of Israel. And then God shows up. And God sends pestilence into there. We're not going to go into all that detail about You go do a Bible study and all that and find out what that is. It's not good. Uh, But God sends the hand of pestilence upon the people. And that city. And those folks finally, they get to the point. We read it. They get to the point. They said, we got to do something with this ark of God we got to get rid of this box because we can't handle. It's not they couldn't handle the box. They couldn't handle the God of the box. we got to get rid of this thing. This, we can't handle this kind of God. We, we don't understand this kind of power. We don't understand this kind of influence. We don't understand this. we got to get rid of this. So they did, you know, they did the best thing they could think of as they pawned it off on their neighbors. They sent it to the next town. Send it to Gath. Them boys, they, they can handle it. They're bigger than us. They send it to Gath. Boy, the folks at Gath got it. Same thing happened to them. And they said, hey, we don't want this thing either. We're going to send it to somebody. They sent it to Akron. Send it to somebody else. Finally, they got smart and they said, hey, there's something special about this God. There's something different about this God. Hey, we need to send this box back where it's supposed to be. Israel didn't have to go get the box. I don't mean that, I don't mean that dis- disrespectful, uh, just, but you understand the context with which I'm saying that. It was a wooden, gold-covered box. They were more concerned about the God of the box. We can't handle this. They sent it back. They sent it back to Israel. I'm glad I serve a God who's able. I'm glad I serve a God who's able to stand up and take care of me. I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I'm glad I serve a God, Brother Bill, that can take someone out of prison and set them free. I'm glad I serve the God that can speak peace. Mark chapter 4, that's the verse I had written down here. Mark chapter 4, verse 39, I won't have you turn there. You can write that down, but that's that verse where Jesus steps to the bow of the boat and He says, Peace, be still. And the seas went calm and the storm fled away. I'm glad I serve a God today that's able. He's able to do abundantly above all that I ask or think. He can do things in my life that I can't even comprehend of. He's got things planned for me that I can't even dream. 
I'm not serving a broken God today. This world is. And that's why they're in the shape they're in. That's why they need us to stand up and say, Oh, but my God's able. Let me show you what my God can do. Let me just, as I walk with Him, let's demonstrate our God's able. Number two, there's another event in the Bible. We're going to talk about several events today that demonstrate to us whether we're serving a broken God or the God of heaven. Take your Bible and turn to 1 Kings, if you will. 1 Kings chapter number 18. 1 Kings chapter number 18, another very familiar passage. I love preaching 1 Kings 18. Several messages from that passage. I promise I'll try not to preach all of them this morning. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 26. We'll just get a snippet out of what's going on, all right? You're familiar with the story. Prophet Elijah on Mount Carmel. All the prophets of Baal, choose you this day. Not, to, not choose you this day. Well, that's, that's, that's Joshua. Let me get back and, get in, uh, let me get back and see the, the, the challenge that they said. Uh, let me go back and, and read it. Look at verse 24. It said, And call ye on the name of your gods, and I'll call on the name of the Lord. And the God that, shall, that answereth by fire, let him be God. Verse number 26. Find the testimony of the prophets of Baal. And they took the bullock, which was given unto them. And they dressed it, called on the name of Baal from morning even till noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. There was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leapt upon the altar which was made, and it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or pre-adventure he sleepeth, and must be awake. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets. And the blood gushed out upon them. It came to pass. When midday was past, and they prophesied at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice, nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. We saw first the God who was unable. Second, we'll see this, the God who is unavailable. The God who is unavailable. Number one, He was unavailable to answer their cry. Let me just ask you a question, and I I want you to think about this carefully. These prophets of Baal, were they sincere? Oh, I believe they were very sincere. And I think what we read demonstrates their sincerity and their devotion to their God. I mean, anybody that'll do what they did. Man, you want to talk a long preaching time. I mean, they started in the morning and they went all day long. But not only that, the Bible says that they cut themselves and, and, and they begin to scar them and they begin to, to, to do all of these things trying to get their God's attention. You think they were sincere? Oh, I believe they were sincere. Just because they were sincere doesn't mean they were right. There are a lot of folks today, and I'm, I'm going to be very careful the way I say this. There are a lot of folks today that are very sincere in what they believe. I'll go one step farther than that. They're convinced that they are right. And they're crying out to their God. The only problem is their God's not answering. I find it interesting that Elijah took the moment there at noon to kind of prod them a little bit. I don't recommend you do that. I mean, he's the prophet of God. He can do what he wants to, but... Cry aloud, for he is a God. And, and he kind of prods them a little bit about uh, getting a hold of their God. The God who is unavailable. Number one, he was unavailable to answer their cry. I'm glad I serve a God 
that's not unavailable, but is always ready to hear and answer. I don't understand it. One of my favorite, y'all know this, one of my favorite songs is that little simple song that Miss Katie and I usually sing together. Miss Christie helps us at times. He loves me like I am his only child. Oh, I don't understand that. I, I, well, Larry, I don't understand. I don't understand how you and I can pray at the same time and both of us have the undivided Tension of the Holy God. I don't understand that. But I'm glad, I'm glad I have a Bible that tells me that's exactly what happened. That none of us stand in line. None of us have to wait. We never get a busy signal. He's always there, always ready, always willing to hear and respond. They cried all day long and they couldn't get a prayer answered. We have a, what is, what is often called God's phone number. Jeremiah 33 and verse number 3 says this, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Do we really serve the God that can Do you believe that we serve the God who will answer? Okay, I'm going to get ugly just, just for a moment. If you really believe that, then what are you asking for this morning? If you really believe He's the God that hears and answers, when's the last time you got on your face before God? You cried out to Him. We're going to do something this month that to me is one of the highlights of my year. Next month, we're not there yet. March, August 1st, right? third week of August we're going to open the church we're going to have an all night prayer meeting 10 o'clock at night to 7 o'clock in the morning the church will be open when's the last time you spent some serious time talking to God I don't serve a broken God that can't hear I, I don't serve a, a broken God that turns a deaf ear to our cries. I serve the God of heaven that said, call unto me and I will answer thee. Call unto me. I'll hear and I'll respond. <laughs> this God they served could not respond to their devotion. Could not respond. Again, I believe they were sincere. I believe they thought they were doing everything they were supposed to do to show their dedication and their commitment to their God. They just had chosen the wrong God. Many today will lose faith. Now listen to me. Many today are going to lose faith in God because they have chosen the wrong God. Oh, they may sit in church pews today and they may sing gospel songs. Unless they put their faith in the God of this book. They're serving the wrong God. And I'm going to tell you right now, that God will fail them every time. What they need to see is someone who is serving the God of heaven that knows when we get on our face before God, He'll answer. He'll respond. Hold another message. Our problem is not that the fact that we don't think he'll respond. It's too many times he's not responded the way we wanted him to. We got our feelings hurt. Come on now, smile right there. We got our old poochie lip out. If God ain't going to do it the way I want to do it, I'll take my toys and go home. You're not impressing God with that. Number three, <laughs> number three, we'll talk about this one. Not only have we talked about the God that's unable, Dagon. The God that was una uh, unavailable, Baal. What about this? The God who's unfamiliar. The God who's unfamiliar. 
I, I'm afraid that we have a group of young people that are growing up and they are not familiar with the God of their parents. They don't know who he is. Joshua. Joshua chapter 24, if you'll turn there with me. Joshua chapter number 24. Joshua 24 verse 14. We find these words written. It says, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. There's a couple of things that I want to pull out and I want to make, I want to make application with in this passage. Joshua is telling them, you need to go forward and serve the Lord. And he reminds them about a couple of things. He says, listen, you don't need to serve. You, you need to go forward. Read it again. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve you the Lord. He's saying, you put away these gods you don't know anything about. Don't go back to those things. Don't go back to the stuff you don't know about. Uh, don't turn away from the living God and something you're not familiar with. Hey, why were they not familiar with the gods of their fathers on the other side of the flood? They were not familiar with them because God had called them out of that place. God had brought them out. And I used to think, and I, I, I won't make good preaching, not, not, not right theology, but I used to think, boy, that was the flood of, of, of Noah, you know, and boy, all those gods before the flood, and God destroyed all them people and makes good preaching, but you go back and you look at the context, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about where Abraham came from on the other side of that river, on the other side of the earth, the Chaldees. And that's what he's talking about, those gods, uh, where Abraham was called out and brought out from. Hey, listen, we need to understand, we need to be familiar with the God of heaven. Don't go back to those things you don't know nothing about. Uh, don't, don't grasp some of those things that, that God's called us away from and brought us out of. Don't turn around and go back to those things. No, let's get familiar with the God of heaven. Let's get in this book and let's study the Word of God. We've been called out from that. We've been called away from that. We've been given an, a, a new direction and a new heart and, and, and a new uh, idea and a new understanding. 1 Peter uh, chapter number 2. Verse number 9 says this, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Hey, we are different today than we used to be. And let's get familiar with the God of heaven. Let's make sure that we're sharing that testimony. Let's make sure that we understand. Let's not go back to those on the other side of the flood. Let's not go back to those ones in Egypt that God's demonstrated His hand against. Let's not go back to those ones that were the gods of the masters of the old life. Let's not go back to that and become familiar with those things again. No, let's leave those and let's go forward and serve God and seek Him and let Him make us who He wants us to be. I find an interesting correlation there in the God who is unfamiliar. We have a lot of people today that are serving a broken God. He's unable to work in their lives. And they're becoming disillusioned. He's unavailable to them, but when they call, they're becoming depressed and distressed. He is unfamiliar to them because they cannot get to know Him. Becoming distraught in their life. And finally, if you'll turn to the book of Acts, we'll finish up. In the book of Acts, chapter 17. Many of you probably have guessed where I'm headed with that one. Acts chapter 17, again. You got close, brother, I'm telling you. Acts 17. Verse number 23, familiar passage. Well, I go back to verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you're too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar. With this inscription, to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship, Him declare I unto you. God who's unknown. We find this story of Mars Hill as Paul walked. They had all of these devotions. Every God they'd ever heard of, they, they put up a, 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 an altar or an idol to that God, and just to make sure they didn't miss one. Just to make sure they, that there wasn't one out there that they didn't get. They put this idol up to the unknown. God, just to make sure we're covering all of our bases. 
They were a religious people. Just being a religious people doesn't make you a right people. Paul began to talk to them and tell them about this God, this unknown God. Wherefore, whom ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. You see, he was just one of many to them. Brother Jim Brown, good friend of ours, that's in heaven now, did a lot of work with a group called Light in the 1040 Window. And it was a missionary group that sent missionaries mainly into India. The 1040 Window deals with longitude, latitude, and it's that area where most of the population of the world lives in that 1040 Window. And he used to say this. He said, it's not difficult to get someone from India to believe and accept Jehovah God. He said the difficulty is getting them to understand that He is the only true and living God. Because in India today, there are over 1,500 gods. And they were glad to add Jehovah to the list of one of their gods. That's not the way it works. He's not, not just one of many. And we live in a society today, and I'm going to say something, I'm, I'm going to clarify it so don't get all ruffled just yet. I, I believe in freedom of religion. I'm glad I live in a country that's free. You can believe what you want to. You can call yourself what you want to. I, I'll go out on that limb. You can use whatever pronouns you want to. That's your own business. But that don't make it right. That don't make it right with the God of heaven. We've got to get back to preaching. Oh, now, preacher, you're, you're getting so narrow-minded that you think Baptists are the only ones going to heaven. No, I've known a lot of Baptists, and I don't think a lot of them are going. I, I'm, yeah, I'm narrow-minded. I'm about this narrow-minded right here. I want to stand on what this book says. I want to stand not on religion. I don't want to stand on this unknown God, just one of many. I want to serve the God of this book. I want to serve the God of this universe. I want to serve Almighty God who said, Hey, listen, I'm not broken today. I'm still doing great things. I'm still moving. I'm still raising up nations and putting down nations. I'm still working in the hearts of men and women. I'm still calling men and women to salvation. I'm still calling men to preach. I'm still calling folks to missions. I'm still doing... He is still working today. I don't serve an unknown God. I serve a God that I got up in the arms of this morning and I let Him talk to me. I got in there this morning and got some fellowship with a holy righteous God that wants to work and move in my life. I don't serve a broken God today. I serve the true and living God. He's still alive. He's still working and He still wants to do great things today. It's not just a religion. I've got several several. Uh, 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 passages written down here. I'll give them to you. We're out of time. Isaiah 45 and verse number 22. Acts chapter 4 and verse number 12. He's not just one of many. He is the true and living God. And until we stand up and start preaching that and living that once again, that He is true and He is right and He is holy and He is to be worshipped, then we're not going to make any headway in trying to reach the world with the gospel. I, I don't mean it ugly. When I say Jesus is the only way, I don't mean that condescending and ugly I mean it from a heart of love because he is and folks need to understand last passage Acts chapter 17 Acts chapter 17 verse 24 we'll start reading there we read right up to it start reading there in verse number 24 notice what it says God that has made the world and all things therein seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needeth anything. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. And hath made of one blood all nations of men. For to dwell on all the face of the earth. And hath determined the time before appointed. The bounds of their habitation. They should seek the Lord. If happily they might fill after him and find him. Though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move, and have our being. 
as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's devices. Times of this ignorance God winked at. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. We don't serve a broken God today. Oh, the world sees Him as broken. The big movie that was out not long ago, God is not dead. They made that movie because of the movement that people were saying, oh, God's dead. We've moved on. That's just an old way of looking at things. We don't need that anymore. Let me, let me just ask the question. How's that working out for us? How's that working out for us? Now, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to get political, and I'm not trying to call political party. I'm not, I, just, just get all that out of your head. That's not what I'm talking about. Spiritually, how are we doing? Our nation getting closer to God? No, because they're serving a broken God. They need somebody. They need somebody to tell them the truth. God's called us. God's called us to be that somebody. Because if we don't, who will? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Maybe this morning, maybe this morning you've been struggling. Just dawned on you today. Part of your problem is you're serving the wrong God. Still serving the God of this flesh. Still serving the God of this world. Maybe this morning you just need to be right with God. Maybe you need to get saved. Maybe you've never been born again. You just need to make that right. No better time than the present. Get on the right team. Maybe this morning you just have to say, Preacher, I know I'm saved. I, I know I'm born again. I, I've got that testimony of what God's done in my heart, but I've been struggling here of late. Maybe you've allowed the philosophy of the world to invade your thinking. Allowed the philosophy of the world to move your focus away from a holy and righteous God. Maybe you need to come this morning and get in this altar. Rededicate a life to God and say, God, I, oh, I need to get back close to you. I don't want to serve a broken God. Church, maybe this morning we just have to say, whoo, the world needs the light. God's called me to be that light. I want to be all the light that God wants me to be. How will we respond? Father, we are again thankful for the day. What a joy. What a joy just to be able to stand in a pulpit, preach not about a broken God, a God that can't move, a God that can't hear, a God that can't do. Oh, but to speak of the God of heaven, who's able, always available, always familiar, Give ourselves completely to you. To your honor. Jesus. Let's all stand. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Altars are open this morning. Don't hide behind a broken God. Won't you come today? Maybe you need to come for salvation. Let God have his way. Maybe this morning you need to come and rededicate a life. Won't you come?
over. I thank you for your presence this morning. Does the world know? Does the world know we serve a living God? I ask that it does. One quick thing we need to take care of. <clears throat> a few, um, I guess it's been a few, a couple of months ago now, uh, we started the process of receiving uh, Brother Elijah and Miss Caitlin uh, as members. Uh, we got the letter back for Brother Elijah. Miss Caitlin, we had a little bit of a, a, little bit of a difficulty. Uh, so I would recommend to the church, I've already talked to her, it's not, not something new to her, and I promised I wouldn't. Brother Elijah, should I make? No, I ain't doing that anymore. All right. I am, no, no, no. Uh, so I've talked to Miss, Miss Caitlin about this, and what we'd like to do is present her own statement of her faith in baptism uh, and receive her in that manner. Uh, no problems. The, the church that she's coming from, uh, had a, has a similar policy to ours, um, and so therefore they're not able to send the letter. So we would just like to take her own statement. So I would in a motion a second to go ahead and receive her by statement. Uh, uh, we got, all right, Brother Jaco, Brother John, I saw you next. Uh, so we have a motion a second that we receive the, her by statement. Uh, uh, any questions about that? Are all in favor? Amen. All right, so we'll take care of that. Somebody remind me. Miss Christie, we did that. Amen. She's in the nursery. Somebody remind me we did that so I can tell Miss Christie so we can get it written down. All right. Uh, so thank you for that. I'm excited about uh, them being uh, members and, and getting them involved in all that's going on. Uh, thank, for, thank them for helping out with Vacation Bible School. All right. Do remember, do remember uh, that the uh, baby shower, I got it right this time. I've been saying wedding shower for the last six weeks. The baby shower will be today, so that will be back in the fellowship hall. Uh, so our evening service will be at 6 o'clock, right? So just want to make sure that you are fully aware of that. All right, 6 o'clock. Right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thanks again uh, for being with us today. Uh, thank you for your grace. Uh, pray for those who are not feeling well. Uh, but let's dismiss uh, in the Lord. Brother McCoy, would you dismiss this person?